Welcome to the first lecture video for online contemporary math. We begin our studies in chapter two regarding set theory. Now, many of the topics that we will cover in this chapter may not feel like traditional mathematics. That is, we're not gonna be solving equations or graphing functions or doing many calculations, which in some of your minds may be really good news. But we are going to study the basic foundational framework for how we organize the world around us. And this forms the foundation for many of the branches of mathematics, such as algebra, trigonometry, and calculus. The things that we learn in chapter two will also form an important foundation for what we will study in chapter three. So do your best to master the skills now because it will certainly pay off later. Section 2.1, deals with basic set concepts. And we begin with set notation. Definition. We classify and categorize things in order to structure our surroundings. A set is a collection of objects called elements or members with some common characteristic. In the table below, we have a few examples of everyday sets. For example, let's look at the set of Amarillo College departments. The members or elements of that set would include the math department, the biology department, the English department, the business department, so on and so forth. Notice this dot, 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 the ellipsis indicates that the elements are not complete. There are other members of that set. Another example set that we use to order and structure our world is ethnicity. Some sample elements would be Caucasian, Hispanic, African American, Asian, and again, there's other members to that set. The set of all cars might include Toyota, Ford, Honda, Chevrolet, so on and so forth. So the set describes a set of elements or members with a common characteristic. We use this to organize equations in mathematics. There's different types of equations, such as linear, quadratic, polynomial, radical, rational, and many, many other types of equations. We also apply set theory to organizing numbers. For example, natural numbers are the counting numbers, one, two, three, four. Notice the ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot in this case indicates that that is an infinite set. It goes on forever and ever. We also have another set of numbers called the integers. They are the natural numbers and the negative versions of those natural numbers in addition to zero. So negative one, negative two, negative three, zero, one, two, and three. This is an infinite set in two directions. So these are some basic examples of everyday sets. Pause the video for a minute and think of another example of a set and list all or several members of that set. Now, once we have a set defined, there's several different ways to denote a set. We're gonna look at three methods for denoting or writing or expressing a set. The first is very basic, it's called the descriptive method. Example one, describe the given set. So in example A, we have the set containing Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The first thing I want you to notice in this set is the curly braces. A set is always enclosed with curly braces. And notice the members of the set are separated by commas. That's how we distinguish uh, one member from another. Now, we're just going to describe this set. You'll recognize those as the names of planets, but if I say this is the set of planets, I have not been specific enough because we know that Jupiter is a planet and Jupiter is not listed in that set. So to be specific, we could say this is the set of all inner planets, or this is the set of rocky planets. I'm just going to describe it as the set of inner planets in the solar system. So we're looking at the members and determining their common characteristic and including that in the description of the set. In the next example, we have the numbers two, four, six, eight, and 10. 
Hopefully your brain recognizes those as even numbers, but that's not quite descriptive enough. If we say this is the set of all even numbers, we'll notice negative four is an even number, but it is not included in that set. So let's be specific. This is the set of all positive even numbers. The set of all positive even numbers. There are two main ways that we express a set. Those two types of notation are called roster notation and set builder notation. In roster notation, each element of the set is listed in curly braces and each element is separated by commas. In example two, we're gonna practice writing the set given a description in roster notation. Example A the set of all months that end in Y. Well, since we are denoting a set, we have to indicate that with curly braces. The first month that ends in Y is the first month. That is January. Next, we have February, March, April, May would work, June, and then July, August, September, October, November, December. I think that is all. So the set of all months that end in Y, that set is listed here in roster notation. Again, the curly braces are essential and each element is separated by commas. Let's try another example. B, the set of standard colors in the rainbow. Well, let's open up our curly braces to begin our set. The standard colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So again, the set is listed in curly braces. It's gonna take a little practice to get your hand to write those correctly. And each element is separated by commas. The other type of notation that we'll use to denote a set in addition to roster notation is set builder notation. The format for set builder notation is fancy. It includes a description of the set enclosed within curly braces. Here's the format. We're gonna read this, the set of all X such that X has property A. When we see that open curly brace, we read it the set of all, and then X is simply a representative of the items in the set. When we see the vertical bar, we translate that as such that, and then on the right side of that vertical bar, we have the description of the set. X has property A. So we're taking the description of the set that we learned in part A, and we're inserting that into this special format called set builder notation. The, the idea is we could build a set based on this description. Example three, convert each set from roster notation to set builder notation. Notice the elements are already listed in roster notation and we're converting it to this new format called set builder notation. Now think about a class roster. A class roster will list every single person in the class in a list format. That is a roster. And that's what we see here with the first set the set A, E, I, O, U. We have the roster of elements in that set. We want to convert this to set builder notation. Now, set builder notation always has the same format. We write the set of all. Now, we need to think of a representative for the items in that set. Notice these are letters. The set of all letters such that the letter is... And in this case, the property they have in common is the fact that they are all vowels. Now, you could also shorten that and call it the set of all X, such that X is a vowel. That would also be acceptable. But you've got a little bit of freedom in how you handle that representative. Next example, the set containing Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas. Clearly, those are all states. 
and the property that they have in common is that they all begin with A. So in set builder notation, we can say this is the set of all states such that the state begins with A. Keep in mind, you do have freedom with this spot. You can use a variable placeholder, the set of all X, such that X is a state that begins with A. So those two types of notation are the main categories of notation that we'll be working with in this section. Again, they are roster notation, where we list each element within curly braces separated by commas, and set builder notation, where we follow this particular format and describe the elements of the set in uh, some sort of description. Note, sets must be well-defined. Example four, are the following sets well-defined? A, the set of all good movies. Let's suppose we want to list the set of all good movies in roster notation, and we begin building this set. We might find that we don't all agree on what composes a good movie. So this one is not well-defined. There is dispute as to which elements belong to that set. Example B, the set of all cars made by Toyota. Well, if we do a little bit of research, we could find out every single car ever made by Toyota and we could make a list. So this one is well-defined. We'll be basing calculations on sets, so it's very important that our foundation, our sets, are well-defined. So the main things that you want to glean from this part of the lecture video is roster notation, listing the elements of a set within curly braces and separated by commas, and set builder notation. Make sure you know the format of set builder notation and you understand how to develop that description. That completes your very first lecture video.